Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. If there's one thing we've learned when filming Wild Kingdom, it's that nature can be harsh. Not all animals are strong and healthy enough to survive. In tonight's episode, we'll explore the relationship between predator and prey. Each plays an important role in keeping animal populations in check. The old and the sickly animals are naturally weeded out, leaving the strong and the healthy to produce the next generation. In fact, predators are only successful about 50% of their attempts to catch food. This reality can seem harsh, but it's absolutely necessary to create that delicate yet natural balance of the animals in the wild kingdom. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, right here on RFD TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by Mutual of Omaha, the people who pay. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Within easy reach of most of us, there's a place combining a natural beauty and fascination we all can share. That place is the familiar hardwood forest. Creatures like the deer, the bear, and the skunk are just a few of the many animals to whom the American woodland is home. Through three others in particular, the gray fox, the otter, and the bobcat, we can observe what happens daily in the woods and along forest streams. Since these three are curious animals and range widely, they encounter most other familiar woodland creatures. By watching them, we can see a world of nature at our doorstep, where numerous stories unfold, like our story today, which occurs in a woods we call Fox Forest. As morning brightens, an almost cathedral serenity spreads over the dense woodland. Even powerful predators are momentarily at peace. The spell of this tranquil morning has touched the red-tailed hawk and the gray fox, and for now, they are content. It is not a time for hunting by stealth and wit but rather for experiencing the essence of life itself. The delicate and timid fawn seems to sense this quite as fully as the hawk, but always with awareness that such a moment is brief. All too soon, the predators will again be hunted. For the intensely curious and mischievous otter, there is no better place to experience life to the fullest than along the little stream which bisects Fox Forest. Later, perhaps, the otter will catch some fish or frogs. But for now, her interest lies in watching other creatures, especially the vixen gray fox who roams these woods endlessly. She was born here, and she is dependent for life itself on what the forest provides, food, shelter, and protection. At intervals during the day, she checks on her pup, who is now old enough to amuse himself while his mother is off roaming the forest. The pup has found a den with baby otters not far from his own. Otters already nearly self-sufficient and easily his rival in cunning and curiosity. His play with them now will help prepare him for later when he must be able to outwit the prey he will seek in the forest.
The young otters are masters at this game of being elusive. In confusing the pup, they too are learning techniques of survival in fox forest. Since it's evident that the young fox will be well occupied for a while, his mother decides to move along and see if she can catch her first food of the day. Instinctively heading toward a place where she has often been successful in taking her most important prey. In the deeper grass along the stream, meadow mice are usually present. The impish nature of the female otter makes her take the risk of being bitten by the fox just to satisfy her impulse for teasing. But having just finished eating, the fox chooses to ignore her and let her go elsewhere for such sport. With such a great variety of wildlife living in these woods, it is no problem to quickly locate something else of interest. Ahead, temporarily away from his mother, is a black bear cub. Still unsure of himself, he's unexpectedly confronting a porcupine. This animal's only too familiar to him. This bear cub once before encountered a porcupine. He knows enough to stay away from a tail that can drive quills deeply into flesh, but the same's not true for his twin. The cubs often come here to drink and climb trees that especially appeal to them, like this one. The footing is precarious, and it's the cub who's had experience with quills who suddenly gets into trouble. The second cub is unsettled by his brother's fall. On the way down, he spies the porcupine moving away and suddenly blames it for all the difficulties he's presently experiencing. Despite the splashing, the serenity of the morning here in Fox Forest has remained relatively intact, but as always, it's never quiet for very long. Now both cubs know it's a serious mistake to get too near a porcupine. This cub must now spend the remaining morning hours at the difficult and painful job of removing quills. After much effort, the bear cub got all the porcupine quills out of his muzzle and then set about to ease the lingering pain. In early afternoon, the bear cub has returned to bathe and cool his fevered mouth. There's not enough excitement in this for the otter, who had watched the painful contortions the bear went through to remove the quills. On the move again, she detects a faint scent in the air which sends her searching up on shore. The scent has come from a late nesting mallard duck. <laughs> In another few days, her ducklings will hatch and she'll be free to move about with them. But right now, both duck and eggs are vulnerable.
The victorious mallard hen was very lucky today. The otter was only curious, not hungry. Otherwise, this female otter would have penetrated the duck's defenses with ease and dined on her eggs. Ahead on shore, some distance from their den in the woods, a mother skunk is training her young to forage for insects and frogs. The otter's well aware of the defenses of an angry skunk. Most woodland predators know that a mother skunk will protect her young from intruders with overwhelming effectiveness. And so a decision to let them alone and look elsewhere for diversion is a wise one. A fawn emerges, heading toward some foliage she especially favors on the opposite side of the stream. The unexpected intrusion is resented by the otter, who turns back to make it clear whose domain she considers this stream to be. The otter's claim to this particular area of the stream valley is a nebulous one. A strong young bobcat, most able hunter of this woodland, considers this his own territory. He has no intention of relinquishing that claim to an otter. Since the cat is considerably bigger and stronger, the otter's only real advantage is that she's not bothered by the water at all. But her adversary despises getting into it and will do so only when he has no other choice. Bobcat has finally been goaded beyond the point of caring whether or not he gets wet. With this development, and the cat's anger steadily increasing, the otter relinquishes her short-lived claim to this territory. As the otter continues moving away, heading for her den log to check on her young ones there, the triumphant bobcat feels the pangs of hunger. He's still a bit young to attempt to bring down the fawn, who is still nervously lingering in the area. But a short distance away, there's a place where he often hunts successfully.
A fleeing gray squirrel misjudges her leap, and the intercepting bobcat forces her up the isolated tree again. It is no haven from this skillful hunter. Now, from some cool, shady spot, deep in the heart of the forest, he will satisfy his hunger and then sleep. Mice were by far the most common prey for the fox in this hardwood forest. But every now and then, he encountered much larger rodents. As the late afternoon shadows begin to lengthen in this woodland wilderness, the gray fox is once again actively hunting for prey in and around Fox Forest. A big woodchuck at the back entrance to his burrow would be fair game if taken unawares. The woodchuck's not often careless and usually spots an enemy before being spotted himself. There will be no woodchuck meat for the vixen gray fox to take home to her pup today, while she savors the lingering scent at the back entrance where the woodchuck vanished. He cautiously reappears 50 feet away at the front entrance to watch what's going on. The woodchuck is relieved to see the fox give up. But the vixen fully intends to find other prey of some sort very soon. Another skilled hunter of this woodland, the badger, will not so easily give up on any woodchuck he decides to hunt. Powerful and savage, he can dig with incredible speed. Right now, he strongly resents this fox being in a territory he's intending to hunt. In a fight with a bad-tempered badger like this, the fox would certainly lose, so she's wise to leave. But competition for prey is not yet over for today. The red-tailed hawk has also come to this rocky meadow adjacent to the forest to hunt. Swift and deadly, she's after one of the many ground squirrels who inhabit this area. This female red-tailed hawk has caught the ground squirrel easily. The passing vixen, still hungry, decides to attempt taking it from her. This hawk has no intention of letting the fox have the fruits of her hunting. The vixen is convinced now that if she is to dine on ground squirrel, she'll just have to forget about trying to take the hawk's catch and get her own. To protect her prey and herself, the hawk keeps a wary eye on the female gray fox. 
But the vixen is absorbed in eating her own catch now and no longer poses a threat. With her meal devoured, the fox wastes no time heading back toward the more protective woodland cover. A small family of skunks is suddenly encountered and the vixen moves in to snatch away one of the vulnerable babies. The skunk can squirt her terrible stench accurately for 10 feet. Since the fox refuses to heed the unmistakable warning being given, she fires. Vile, oily spray could have blinded the fox permanently, but she was lucky this time. It'll take a lot of rubbing to wear the odor away, and the skunk needn't worry that this fox will be bothering her family again. The vixen will have nothing more to do with skunks for some time to come. And as always in times of trouble, she seeks the only real haven she's ever known in the solitude of the deepest recesses of the forest, where a great multitude of creatures are born and spend their entire lives, the gray fox vixen will find the safety and comfort she seeks. For countless past generations, and for numberless generations yet to come, the hardwood forest will provide home, protection, food, and habitat for the many creatures who will live out their lives in this wooded haven called Fox Forest. Some of us are dedicated to helping animals survive. Mutual of Omaha is dedicated to helping you survive the financial loss of sickness or accident. There is an intricate balance to nature in fox forests and similar woodlands throughout America. Without such forests, many wild creatures now living there would simply cease to exist. These animals cannot save the woods, so it is the responsibility of each and every one of us to do what we can to preserve the forest lands, to protect them from fire. from indiscriminate lumbering, from destruction in the name of progress. We must accept this responsibility because just like the wildlife living in it, the American forest is now and always has been a vital part of the wild kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, the people who pay has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, helping people find Medicare solutions for over 50 years. To learn more about plan options or how to protect your kingdom, contact us today. Mutual of Omaha, protect your kingdom.